Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Man, it's been almost a year since I've said that. It seems the channel has gone dormant for a while due to several life changes. A lot's happened since we last spoke. I quit my job with the clinic, started a new business, had a new granddaughter, and all sorts of fun stuff. While I haven't exactly forgotten about the channel, I haven't had a whole lot to show on it lately. I don't think that I'm alone in this. As I check out the channels of several prominent Reaper-centric YouTubers, it looks like all of us have come across a bit of a dry spell. Fortunately, I got a call from a friend yesterday with an interesting question. LeBron, over at Pirate Studios, was sent some stems, that is a lot of alliteration, sent some stems, and he would like to be able to edit those stems for his client, much like in the way that I show in the Drum Editing and Reaper course on Promix Academy. I don't know if the client tracked the project in Reaper, and he wasn't sent a project file for Reaper, so my assumption is that the client tracked in a different application, consolidated the takes, and sent him the resulting stems. This presented some interesting challenges for LeBron in setting up his project in a way that's conducive for effective drum editing. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to import multiple takes from a multi-mic session from another DAW and set them up properly in Reaper for editing. Let's take a look. In the project that I don't have open, you'll see my wallpaper and a whole bunch of icons. I wanted to start from ground zero so you can see this exactly as I would do it from the beginning. I've already downloaded the zip file containing the stems and extracted them into the folder that I plan to use for the project. So I'll open my Reaper Projects folder, conveniently located on my desktop and now conveniently on my other monitor. Let's move them over here. I'll go into my 2025 folder and the stems question folder where I've extracted the audio. I've extracted the files into the audio folder and as we can see the client conveniently, or maybe not so conveniently, gathered all of the stems from each pass into its own subfolder. It's not necessarily bad from an organizational standpoint, but let's dig deeper. As I open up the take one stems folder, we can see the names of these files is a bit bizarre. We have a date, what I presume is the name of the song, drum, and REC, followed by REC 1 through 7. I cannot stress enough the importance of properly naming your tracks when you're recording in Reaper. If you name your tracks before you start recording, each of your subsequent recordings, by default, will have the name of that track in the file name. That makes it a whole lot easier when sending things to someone else to help them to understand what each file is without having to listen to it first. I realize that we can simply rename these, but receiving files in this manner tends to cause a bit of an organizational nightmare when setting up a project. But let's proceed. If I go back up one more level, I can see that I've got a few more takes, each of them organized in roughly the same way. All that said, I know where my files are, so let's go ahead and open up Reaper. And before anyone asks about the splash screen, I'm using Reaper Tips new theme. Check the link in the description for more information. I'll create a new project. I have my Reaper set so that it asks me for the name of a project as soon as I go to create one. In this case, I want to use an existing folder, so I'll go into my Reaper Projects folder that we were in before, to 2025, to the STEMS Question folder, and I'll create a name for this project. I'll just call it STEMS Question. And in this case, since I'm already in a subfolder, I do not want to check mark the Create Subdirectory for Project option. So I'll save, and now we've got our project. Typically in Reaper, by default, when you drag and drop media items into the Track Manager, or Arrange View, or whatever this area is properly called, Reaper will make a copy of that. But since I've already placed this audio in the audio folder, I want to make a change to my project settings. I'll go to File, and Project Settings, and let's take a look at the Media tab. In the center of the dialog, we'll notice On Import of Media to Project, mine is currently set to use the global preference, which is Copy Media to Project Path. Now because our files are named in the way that they are, I'd like to preserve that folder structure and not alter this any further. So I'll change this option to Do Not Copy Media to Project Path, and press OK. Now we're ready to start importing our data. We can do this a few different ways. I can open up my File Explorer in Windows, or Finder in Mac, go into my Target subfolder, highlight each of these, and drag them into Reaper. I'm going to start these at Measure 3, just because. And when I release my mouse, Reaper detects that I'm trying to insert multiple media items. Since these are different drum kit pieces, the logical choice is same time position on separate tracks. I'll press OK, and my eight tracks have been imported. Now this is where things start to get a little bit annoying for me because of that naming convention, so now we'll need to go through and name each of these so that we understand what each kit piece is. And I know that I said that there are multiple ways to import the media items into Reaper. We'll cover another method when we bring in the additional takes. I'd like to see the full extent of my project, so I'll press Control or Command page down. Now I can see my waveforms, and I'll solo these one at a time to try to figure out what they are. If you right-click the solo button on the desired track in the Mix Control panel, that's a mouthful, 
I have a few different options for solo. In this case, I want to use exclusive solo, which you can see that that is also bound to control alt and left click. Knowing that shortcut is just going to save me a few extra clicks as I go from track to track. So I'll move my playhead to a position where I've got some audio and let's take a listen. That sounds like snare top to me, so I'll name track one snare top. And knowing that my exclusive solo shortcut is control alt click, I'll control alt left click the solo button on track two, and that gives me exclusive solo on track two without having to unsolo track one. Hopefully track one is snare bottom, but let's find out. And indeed it is. So let's name that track. Well, exclusive solo on track three. Make sure that we find where there is data on that track. That sounds like a kick drum to me. Moving on to track four. That sounds like Tom one. Now looking at the remaining tracks, I'm going to assume that this is Tom two, Tom three, and then overheads, but let's be absolutely sure before we proceed. We'll try track five, Tom two, track six, Tom three, track seven, that is an overhead, I'm going to assume it's left. I can correct these names a little bit later, and it's probably fairly safe to assume that this is the opposite side overhead. That is definitely the overhead, but I believe that this is the left side, assuming the drummer is left-handed. So let's go ahead and rename this. Now once you've got these tracks renamed, because of the naming convention that was contained in the files themselves, it is very important that we do not rearrange these tracks until we're ready and have all of the media imported to the appropriate places. I'm going to shrink my tracks and shrink the project to where I can see all of the tracks again. And we'll go back to measure three, where we started. Now we're ready to import the remaining tracks. And this time I'd like to open the Media Explorer. So I'll click on View and Media Explorer or Control alt x Now you'll notice you've got a few shortcuts on the left-hand side of the Media Explorer and what I'd like to focus on is Project Directory. That will take me directly to the project in question, particularly inside of the audio subfolder. I'm ready for my Take 2 stems, so I'll open that folder. And we should sort these by file name to make sure that we're following that same naming convention. In this case, the naming convention is a bit different, so I'm hoping that these last two files are the overheads. We can preview them by clicking them. And it sounds like these are not named correctly. Interesting. Let's try the next one. So it sounds like these are Tom tracks. This presents yet another complication. Let's see what we've got. So it sounds like this track actually is the snare top. Let's try the next. That is the snare bottom. That is the kick. So in theory, number five here should be our tom three. Except for the fact that it is not. So the trick now is to figure out, again, which track is which and to place them onto the appropriate track. So this may take a moment. If these were all named appropriately, we could simply highlight all of them and drag to the top one. Reaper would give us the option to place these on separate tracks, just as we did before, except we would end up with them in the wrong position. Just to show you how that should work if these were named appropriately, I'll do just that. I'll select all of my files and drag them to the same starting point on the first track. I get the option to import into the same time position on separate tracks. And because I'm working in fixed item lanes by default, when I press OK, I now have fixed item lanes for each of these tracks that has the different takes. But since we know that this is not accurate, I'll go ahead and undo that. Something else of interest is these lower tracks are not full project length. So let's go back to our Media Explorer and check the other takes to see how they're arranged. Take three looks to be as the first set, so let's import these and hope for the best. And if I close my Media Explorer, these line up appropriately, and hopefully they are all the same kit piece. One thing I'd like to do before I proceed is go ahead and group my tracks for media editing. So I'll highlight track one and hold shift and highlight track eight to ensure that all of those tracks are selected. Next, we'll need to go into our grouping menu. 
If you like digging through menus, go to Track, Track Grouping, and Track Grouping Parameters, or as you can see in the keyboard shortcut here, the default is Shift-G. Now we can set our grouping parameters for our eight selected tracks. If you're planning on making multiple groups, it's not a bad idea to rename these, so let's go ahead and rename this Drums, or Drum Editing, or whatever you'd like to call it. You can assign it a custom color if you'd like. And the main thing that I'd like to focus on here is Media Razor Edit Lead and Media Razor Edit Follow. This helps to ensure that any edits that I make to a single track is performed across all of the tracks in the group. That is a critical part of workflow when editing drums. This also helps to ensure that when I'm changing takes in my media lanes, that each of the drum tracks is changed accordingly. We'll close this, and we can see that I now have the red flag on each of these tracks to indicate that they are part of the same group. So if I'd only like to hear Take 2, I can click Take 2, and you can see that the remaining tracks have done the same thing. I'd like to go ahead and pan out my drums a bit so I can listen to this and make sure that my tracks are in good shape. So I'll take my overhead right and pan that to the right, overhead left to the left, Tom 3, I'll pan that hard right, Tom 2, let's just leave it in the center, Tom 1 to the left, kick, snare top, and snare bottom can stay in the center, that's fine. Let's take a quick listen and make sure that this sounds cohesive. Sounds like a drum set. What I'd like to check for now is to listen to take one and make sure that it sounds relatively the same. And it does. We clipped a little bit, but we're not going to worry about gain staging at this point. We'll go back into the Media Explorer, and let's take a look at take four. Take four follows that same naming convention, so we should be in good shape. I'll shift click each of these to make sure that they're all selected. And just as we did before, I'll drag those to the first track at the same starting point and release. Those will go into the same position on separate tracks. And we now have three takes across each one. We'll go back into our project folder once again and take a look at take five. And we have that same naming convention. So I'll grab these and do the same operation again. Now I've got my four takes on each of these tracks. I'll get the mixer out of the way for just a moment and we'll extend each of these just so we can see if I can grab them. And as we said, we've got four takes on each of the tracks. And as I click on any one take, they all change at the same time so I can listen to whichever one I'd like to listen to. At this point, yes, our project file names are all sorts of unusual, but we can still work with this. I won't go into a full-on drum editing tutorial on this because I've got plenty of videos on that available on YouTube as well as in the drum editing and Reaper course. But hopefully this has been helpful and will show you what I consider to be a pretty good way of setting up a project to prepare for editing. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, I Like Coffee, Patreon, or Super Thanks link below. And if you like this coffee cup, you can get one from the link below. If you'd like to stay in touch in between videos, definitely hop on that Discord server, and we'll see you next time, however long that is. I really got to get a pre-flight checklist or something. Is my audio interface even on? Stupid lights. I have forgotten so much of what I do to set up for this.